Well, as they said, my name is Tim Golden, and I'm a brand new permanent deacon since August of last year. And if I can get this to work. And that was about seven months ago. So I really am a rookie in my deacon ministries. I've had my first homilies, my first baptism, my first Christmas, my first Holy Week, and my first Easter vigil with Father Dave. Even at our small cluster, we received eight new members into the Catholic faith through the RCIA process. And we used all seven of the readings in the beginning, and the service lasted about two and a half hours. But I was so wrapped up and involved with all of it, it went by like a flash to me, and I just love being a deacon. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's quite a few parishes represented here, and most of you have probably changed your parish at least once in your lifetime. Either you've moved to another part of town, or you may follow a priest that's been reassigned. But I've been all my life, some 60 years now, I know it's coming, at only one parish, Our Lady of Lourdes in St. Matthew's. Lourdes started in 1950, and my mom and dad were founding members, and so were the parents of many of my classmates. Some of them, like me, have remained in the parish since baptism. In fact, my kids went to school with some of their kids. Parents, children, and grandchildren are still attending Lourdes. Well, when my kids were in the third and fifth grades, one of the maintenance men there became ill and was going to need about two or three weeks recovering time. Well, I was available, so they asked me just to fill in for that short time until he was able to come back to work. And you probably, yeah, somebody laughing, they probably know the rest of this story. I've been there for 16 years now as a maintenance man. Well, the reason for this short but somewhat boring history of me is coming up. My parents, friends, and fellow founders knew me as a youngster growing up in the parish. Most all of the adults knew most all of the young children and who belonged to whom in the parish. And likewise, the kids also knew most of the parents. Hello. As all of us kids grew older, I was known to my classmates as one of those that did stick around in the parish. And all of us would volunteer both at school and at church. Oh, this is a good one. That's the picture of all of us growing up. I happen to be the one little guy in the very center of the enclosed picture back in 1961. <laughs> and that is me when I started in 97 and me just the other day when my daughter took that picture. <laughs> but quite a few years ago, we had a seminarian that spent two summers with us. Ah, there it is. Spent two summers with us, and he volunteered as part of the Lourdes cooking crew down at the St. Joe's Orphans Picnic. Well, the Lourdes cooking crew takes care of all of the outside food down there at the picnic. Not the big fancy chicken dinner inside, but the, the good stuff, the fried fish, the bratwurst, the fries, and slaw. And you may recognize he was a seminarian back there, but that's our own Father Jeff Schooner when he spent one of his summers at Lourdes. Well, when I became a maintenance man, I became more than just one of the dads. I was part of the parish staff now. Well, that and 25 cents used to be able to get you a cup of coffee at White Castle. I've worked through two complete sets of kids that have been there from kindergarten through the eighth grade. In fact, the eighth grade class there now wasn't even born when I started. Now, all of my kids, as well as my classmates' kids, are grown up and out of college even, and some of them have kids of their own. And most, but not all, of the original parish founders sadly are gone now. There aren't many left to say, 
I knew Timmy when he was growing up at Lourdes. And some of my classmates that are still there, they say, they let him become a deacon? <laughs> well, the big difference now is the younger families that have joined since my kids have moved on. They only knew me as a maintenance man, and most don't recognize the founding, parent, founding members' last names. I am not assigned to Lourdes as a deacon, um, but I am still working there. I'm assigned to the cluster of St. Therese, St. Elizabeth, and our Mother of Sorrows down in Germantown. And the actual weekend that I was ordained, Father Scott Wimsett, who is the current pastor at Lourdes, and knowing that I was a lifelong member, well, he allowed me graciously to give the homily that whole weekend. The, uh, well, this exposed me to all of those young families that only knew me as a maintenance man. Most didn't know that I'd been training for the previous four years. Only some of the original founding members um, that were still around knew that I was in training. But being late August when I was ordained, school had already started. And at the next Thursday morning prayer service, the principal asked if I would like to take part to show the school and the teachers that I had become a deacon now. The kids and the teachers were more amazed than I was. And since that prayer service, both kids and teachers have stopped me in the hall to ask some of the classic church questions, and fortunately, I did know most of those answers. <laughs> but the best part is when I'm spotted away from school, like at Target or Kroger, or out to eat or anywhere, and the kids will point out to their parents, tap them, and that's the deacon back at school. When previous to my ordination, they would say, that's the janitor back at school. So there wasn't much difference. They just knew I was away from school. <laughs> well, the kids could now see, and they realized, that work and church can work together in a lifestyle and mingle together. It took me a while, though, to realize that I was evangelizing with only my presence as a deacon. Not what I said at a prayer service or even at a homily. And that's why I call this presentation Unrealized Evangelization. You don't have to be a fire and brimstone preacher standing on the soapbox in front of the Yum Center. Let your life speak volumes. Often what we, say, often what we do says much more than what we say. 